In a previous screencast, I showed you how to install and run the Doctopus script into a Google spreadsheet so that you can distribute uh, template files out to students and manage them. So this is the, the, the sheet that we were working with. I've got links to each of those individually shared documents out to my students. Uh, this was the original template that I sent out to them. Remember, I can do all the fancy things with Doctopus, like setting up an embargo so students can't edit it anymore and you can you can give them comments and you can open it back up again to them to allow for revisions well that's that's great for some basic comments but what if you actually want to assess it using a rubric well Doctopus has an additional feature called a gubric as in attaching a Google rubric to it pretty clever so here is my video planner that I shared out. Remember I'll show you the example. that This is Jenny's example here and she's actually showing people in her video how to use Doctopus. I've got a video rubric that I've created and the students are informed about and this is just another simple Google spreadsheet. I've got my columns with the, the value, the numeric value across the top. Cell A1 needs to be blank and down column A, I've got the different uh, assessment things that I'm taking a look at or standards, whatever you want. Filled in each of the boxes with the descriptors for uh, each of those levels of, of each of the criteria. Each of the criteria. A nice thing about these uh, this Gubric script is you can actually use the same rubric on many projects. It doesn't actually make any changes to this Google spreadsheet at all, but it'll implement it here in a, in a second. So in order to make Gubric work, you need to install an extension into Chrome. So if you go to your Chrome web store and you search for Gubric and take a look at the extensions, you will install the latest here from Andrew Stillman. You add it to Chrome and it's going to add a little guy right here, a little Gubric icon has been added to Chrome that you can, and it'll pop up whenever you're on a page that can, that can use it. So I go back here to my spreadsheet with Doctopus in it and I need to set up the Gubric rubric and attach it to this particular assignment. So I go here to Attach Gubric. Okay. It gives me some instructions here. I install the Gubric extension. I've already done that actually. You have to authorize Gubric the, uh, in order to run. It pops up a new little window. Once you get a confirmation message, you can just go ahead and close that. It gives you some information here on what your uh, rubric should be formatted as or how, what it should look like and you select your rubric. This will take you to your drive and you can search for it. Oops, if I spell it right, video rubric. That's the one that I want to use. It's going to do a little analysis to make sure everything's okay. It may tell you that something is wrong, you need to edit it, and then you get a little preview. So now I've attached this rubric to my assignment. Like all of Stillman scripts, we always have a fun little GIF to watch, make the, pa the time pass a little bit more quickly. So, all right, now it's done some work here on our spreadsheet. It's added some extra stuff. If you take a look down here at the bottom, it's got rubric scores. This is going to be a log file, basically. And what's really cool, it's gone through and it's read my rubric. And here are those he uh, headings along the column. I've got my four different criteria that I'm looking at. It's also got a place for commenting and those types of things. So it keeps track of that. Back on sheet one, it added some more columns as well. And this is where it's going to have one row for each student, and it's going to keep those scores. Those scores are going to be reflected in both, in both places. So I've gone through again, and I've attached my rubric. Everything is ready to go. And now I can go through and start to grade my assignments. So let's open up Jenny's project. Now, just to be clear, Jenny can't do this. This has to be done from one of the teachers that you've that you've defined. You can see up here to the at the right end of the Omni box, there is the little rubric icon. When you click on this, it's going to look for the rubric that's been associated with this particular project. And here we go. So now I've got my different. Uh, values across the top. I've got those explanations or those descri descriptions at each of the levels and I've got a box to enter each of the scores. So I'm going to go through and give the scores here. Four for that one and you see what's cool, see what's happening there? We've got it highlighted already. We got a two for there. We get a five. Oh, that's outside. It doesn't work. Give it a one. Give this one a four. It automatically shades it and I can say this is great work. 
Now, this is a point you, you all need to remember. This is a little pop-up window. Works great. You can fill in the information. The problem is if you click or navigate away from this box, it disappears. And I haven't saved my work. So when I go back and I click on the Gubrick icon again, it's going to look for that rubric, but it's not going to remember any of the information that you had already put into it. So be very careful when you're using this uh, when you're using this feature and know that that's just something. Don't click outside. So you may want to compose your comments and then copy and paste them in, or you can just write them in here. Okay. I like to have this one checked. You can send this uh, rubric and the rubric right to the student via their email address. So let's go ahead and submit and paste into the document. It saves it. And it gives you a little message to go ahead and proceed to the next document. Okay. So now you can see what it's done here. It's actually pasted my rubric down here at the bottom with the proper columns shaded and I've got my information. I've got my uh, little comments there at the bottom as well. If I flip over to Jenny and I take a look at her email, I go back to my inbox and I refresh it, I've got a new email and here's another copy of it. So not only does it paste this information down here at the bottom, it also copies it or sends them to them to them via email. Let's take a look at what it's done to our spreadsheet. So here I can see in Je this is Jenny's row right here and I have got my scores written in there. I've also got the comments recorded. On the rubric scores, remember this is a log, so every time I grade it, I can regrade it and those will be shown here. So let's go back and actually let's make a change. Let's say Jenny has fixed some things with her audio. I'm going to go back to her project, click on my Gubrick icon again, and now since I saved it, it's actually going to pull up the scores that I gave her. So let's change this to a 4. Her video app part got a little bit better and we submit it again. So down here at the bottom it's actually pasted the second rubric down below. So it's great because kids can keep track of what it what their scores were the first time. It gives it a time and date stamp and you can see what they've gotten on the second revision. Back in our spreadsheet as well, the, the main sheet one that we're looking at with the one row per student, it actually gives us the most updated information and I can tell that it's been scored twice. Back in the rubric scores sheet, I've got here a list or a log file of what it was. So I can go back and take a look at the previous scores pretty easily. So that is Gubrick. It allows you to attach rubrics to to files that you have distributed using Doctopus. Now that's an important thing to remember. You can't attach a Gubrick to a document that hasn't been shared out using the Doctopus script. So you have to use the two together. You can use Doctopus all by itself and not necessarily use Gubrick, but in order to use Gubrick you have to have distributed, distributed that document via Doctopus. Remember, if you have any questions about this, feel free to get in touch with me. Also, you can check out upd.org uh, and find out more information in general about Google Apps Scripts that can be used uh, within your classroom. Pretty amazing stuff. So until next time, happy scripting.